Hi, math heads. Um, we're entering the end of our first grade math studies. And um, what we would have spent this week working on is shapes. And you know that we had already started our shape packets a long time ago, back in, I believe, January. Um, and that was where we would pour out all the pattern blocks and we would really work with shapes. But there are basically two different kinds of shapes that we would study in first grade. The first kind is what we call flat closed shapes. And the second type of shape is what we call three dimensional shapes, shapes that you can really hold in your hand. Um, that have sides to them um, and we'll be studying about these in the next video but today I just wanted to go over with you guys a little bit what we know about shapes so that as you're doing your work this week you understand what I'm talking about so when we are talking about shapes um, shapes are really important because if you look around wherever it is that you are sitting right now, everything that you see in your house, in the world, has been made out of shapes. It's a combination of lines and points. So um, what we usually talk about is sides when we talk about shapes. And the first shape that comes to mind is a triangle. Now, in pattern blocks, the triangle was green, if you remember, and it was a perfect triangle. So that means all the sides were the same. That's called an equilateral triangle. But a triangle does not have to have all three sides the same. It can look a little bit different. So we know it has three sides. The other thing we know about a triangle, when we count its sides, is it also has three points. Now the real math word for those points is vertices. So you'll hear me call them vertices or points, either one. Um, but a triangle has three sides and three points or three vertices. Okay, so some of you were working on this in your um, blue shape folder before um, school got out. So the other way we can draw triangles though is they don't have to look like this. As long as they have three sides, they can look any of those different ways, okay? So triangles, as long as they have those three sides, they are considered a triangle, okay? Okay, then we get into shapes that have four sides, and there's actually a lot of those. So um, in the pattern blocks, there was a square, that has four sides. Um, there was a trapezoid that had four sides, right? There was a rhombus, which many of us like to call a diamond, but actually in first grade world, it's called a rhombus. And there was that um, thin brown one that was another rhombus. It was just a little bit skinnier. I don't even know if I can draw that very well. So these shapes all have four sides and four points or four vertices. So that's one thing that you'll notice about flat shapes is however many sides they have, they'll have that exact same number of vertices. That's sort of like the pattern of geometry, okay? So you can see the four points would be here on my square, the four points would be here on my trapezoid, the four points would be here on my rhombus. Um, now, there isn't a rectangle in pattern blocks, but we can draw a rectangle. I'll use 
this blue. So all of these shapes over here are the same because they have four sides. So what we call those is we call them quadrilaterals. Quad means four. And so these shapes over here are all called quadrilaterals. Now in triangle, the word tri means three. So that's why it's called a triangle. Over here, these are called quadrilaterals, which is why quad means four. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to spell that here. Quad laterals. Okay, and that means that they have four sides and they have four points or vertices. So math words actually give you hints as to what they mean because I remember learning geometry when I was younger, maybe your age, and thinking, how do these teachers expect me to remember these giant words? Well, it'll get easier as you get older, first of all. But the other way is by looking at these hints. So you know that a tricycle has three wheels. Well, a triangle has three sides. You know that a, um, if you've ever heard people ride quads, um, they have four wheels. A quadrilateral will have four sides. Okay, so then we get into bigger shapes, and there are. There's um, three more that we're sort of going to go over and talk about how many sides they have, and then we'll talk about some um, special things that go on. So we're at three, and then we move to four. So let's just really quickly draw one that has five. There we go. Any shape that has five sides. So it doesn't have to look like this one right here. Okay. It could look wacky wonky. Let's see if I can draw another one. One, two, three, four, five. That has five sides. Any shape that has five sides is called a pentagon. Okay, and it would have five sides and I bet you already know five points. Right, and there's no pattern block that has five sides. Um, some of you were on the, um, the pages where you had to build a five-sided shape using your pattern blocks and that was really tricky. I think Harper was on that. Um, I don't remember who else, but that was super fun to try and do. So that's a pentagon. And just like tri means three and quad means four, pent actually means five, okay? Now we come to another pattern block that you guys all know pretty well. This pattern block was the biggest pattern block. It's the yellow guy, right? And we would use that one on Fridays in our shape packet. And so you can tell we're going up in sides, three, four, five. So this one, of course, has six. And this shape right here is called a hexagon. And hex means six. So it has six sides and six points. But now again, a hexagon doesn't have to look like this yellow shape. It can be any shape that has six sides. So I could draw another one. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at this one. It looks nothing like this shape, but when I count the sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
And when I count my vertices, my points, that means where two lines go together, one, two, three, four, five, six. So as long as it has six and six, then it is a hexagon. Now, um, there's a little bit of a trick for remembering that a hexagon has six sides. This is how I remembered it growing up. So the word six ends with an X. Hex has an X in it. So that was always how I would remember on a test if my teacher said, how many sides does a hexagon have? Hex and six both have an X and they're the only ones that do. So that's how I would remember that. Um, now the other shape that you hear about a lot um, is an octagon. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'll use pink for octagon. And this is what an octagon looks like. Octagons you probably see around town because it's the shape of a stop sign. And an octagon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides which means if we follow the geometry rules, it would have eight points as well, okay? And an octagon, six sides, and six, oh, I'm sorry, eight sides, what am I doing? I'm copying that one, and eight points. Okay, so if we follow our tricks to our words, we have tri means three, quad means four, pent means five, hex has that X, it means six. So oct, what do you think oct? What other word have we heard of that has oct in it? Octopus. An octopus has those eight long arms on its body. So same with our octagon shape. So these are just some of the things that we're going to start talking about when we talk about shapes. Shapes in the math world are also called polygons. That is what they're called. So you'll hear sometimes on math videos, they'll talk about polygons. And that's just a fancy name for shapes. Um, all of these shapes, here have closed edges. That means if they were a fence, there would be no way to get in. They don't have any open gaps or spaces, okay? And their sides and their points, or if we use our big vocabulary, their vertices match up. So this is just um, an intro to shapes. I know most of you know these. Um, the cool thing about learning about shapes is if you look around your house or you look around our classroom or the world, you'll notice that most of the time, shapes are not just one shape. Your couch is lots of shapes that's been, that have been put together. If you look at your kitchen, look at your kitchen cupboards, look at your refrigerator, everything has a shape and it has been put together with other shapes. So a lot of jobs as we grow up need us to know about shapes, especially if we're those creative minds. Those of you who love building with Legos, that's what you're doing. You're building with shapes. You happen to be building with three-dimensional shapes, and we'll get into that in our next lesson, that shapes are very important for us to learn about. Um, so we kind of understand how the world fits together. So I um, hope you had a good time learning about shapes. Um, when we draw, a lot of times we draw with shapes. Almost all my direct-to-draws are done by doing shapes. If you think about our nutcracker that we drew, we started with a circle and then we went to rectangles. That's how we were artists. So... Um, It'll be pretty fun for you to just play around with shapes, draw some, really try to figure out, maybe try to draw some triangles and then draw some quadrilaterals, pentagons, hexagons, octagons. Um, 
they almost sound like teams. Make, you can make your triangle team and then you can make your quadrilateral team and your pentagon team, hexagon team, octagon team. The only shape that um, is sort of snooty, if you will, sort of the boss, sort of in shape land thinks he's the king, is um, our good old buddy, the square. The square's up here. Now, why does he think he's so fantastic? Well, because on a square, everything matches perfectly. All four sides are exactly the same. So squares, whether they're tiny or whether they're large, they always look exactly the same. It's not that way for triangles or quadrilaterals or pentagons or hexagons or octagons. They can look lots of different ways as long as they have the same amount of sides. Not a square. A square is very snooty. It wants all four of its sides exactly the same all the time. And so we do have to remember that when we're looking at different math pages and when we're looking at the world, sometimes things almost look like they're a square, but they're not unless all sides are the same. So I'm actually going to turn the camera and I'm going to have you look at our wall real quick in this room that I'm in. I'm in the um, Cami and Teddy's den. Um, but if you look on our wall, let me see if I can show you. You see it up there? The sign in the middle happens to be a rectangle, but on the sides of it, there are actually four squares. So that room for me right away, or this room, shows shapes. Um, this giant piece of paper that I'm working on happens to be a rectangle because if you look, the top and the bottom are definitely shorter than these long sides. So it wouldn't get to be in the square club because not all four sides are the same. So shapes are kind of fun. I wish we were doing this together in our classroom and still finishing our blue um, books because that was always so fun. And I know that you guys loved to dump out those pattern blocks and make a mess, but you will get to do that in second grade too because we studied geometry all the way up through high school. All right? So, um, excellent job today. I love you guys and I miss you and there's no place like home. Bye.